I've been seeing a lot more people talk about the value of protecting someone's identity if you want to share pictures or video from somewhere like a protest. Today I'm going to show you what I believe is the quickest way to do that in DaVinci Resolve. That's going to be the first part of the video, and then I'm going to show you sort of the expanded DaVinci Resolve Blackmagic sort of ecosystem that I really believe everyone in these specific situations, people who want to quickly share video from any sort of breaking event like this, especially if they want to go on to then like blur faces or do any other relatively minor editing, how they can do all of that, maintain quality, do these sort of processes they want, but also share these video clips out as quickly as possible. Want a sneak peek? Here I have my camera recording in the Blackmagic camera app, and here in DaVinci Resolve, I have that same file that here has me as I have begun this recording. But also share these video clips out as quickly as possible. Pretty cool. I'm going to show you all about it after we talk about some cool stuff inside Resolve. I'm here in DaVinci Resolve. I've got um, the same sort of clip here I'm going to use as a demo clip. This is just stock footage, but I think I think it'll work out pretty well. I've got three because I'm going to show you uh, really one main method, but then three simple like variations for style. We're going to try like a pixelate effect, a straight blur. And then if you just want to like block out something entirely um, with like a black solid, we're going to do that. And for all of these, we're actually going to hop into the color page. I talk a lot on this channel about the fusion page, which yes is more standard for some like visual effects. And you might think the fusion page would be better suited for this, uh, but there are some tools in the color page that make this just so easy, especially if you want this sort of like quick turnaround. Now, quick side note, uh, because I just attempted to record this section and ran into some issues because this clip is actually uh, a pretty tough case, but that allows me to demonstrate how to deal with tough cases. So we've got this clip, we've got this node. I'm going to drag this mosaic blur node down here. And then if I drag it over this line, it will slot it right in. The entire thing will have this sort of pixelated effect. You could always drag this effect right onto this first node where it would like live as a separate kind of effect. I left this one by itself. I don't know, force of habit, you probably don't need to. Uh, but in this effects sort of panel here, you see you can change this pixel frequency to choose just how pixelated you want it to be. And then down here on this bottom panel, if this window option is selected, I'm going to click this circle to limit the effect of that mosaic blur just to this face we want to track. And then if I go one panel over, we have this tracker window, and that is going to track this mask based on the footage behind it. You can see in these options up here, if this was just like an effect, I could do that, but I am tracking that window. Um, I am also going to uncheck some of these options, this zoom, rotate, and 3D, um, especially with this clip. This tracker will try to account for things like 3D motion. So as this person sort of moves their head, it would sort of like try to stick to the front of their face. Uh, that's a lot. We don't want that for now. I'm also going to change this over from clip to frame. Um, that won't be as essential right off the bat, but when this comes to sort of like dealing with the issues we'll run into when we try to track this, that will help. So now I'm going to come about halfway into this clip, make sure we're centered, and then I can click this button to track forward and backward, and you'll see where we run into issues. It tracks back. Oh, it does a pretty good job. Tracks forward. Oh, also does. Hey. <laughs> This does a better job than I just ran into, um, but I'll show off how to kind of fix things anyway. I will sort of like shrink this to more face size. And then if I go back to that initial track point, I can also use this arrow to make sure I'm especially on that keyframe. Oh, you can you can even see in that change I did, if I adjust this mask at all, that is stored as keyframe data. So if I come forward to where her head sort of turns, I'm gonna set another keyframe here, and then when it turns back and it's sort of off of frame, if I move that back now, that data is stored in this keyframe. So it goes off to the edge. I'm even going to set another one to make sure that face is covered all the way. Then back forward. And then as this goes forward, uh, it is shifting a little bit. But if I go all the way back to that first keyframe uh, that I have set here, I will even widen this a bit here. You'll see now that stays locked much better as it goes forward. Still looking good. As she moves away, that is handled really well. Um, and then we're back towards the end, that last keyframe, which I will trim just a little bit and then see if that slips anywhere in the middle. Oh, no. Now that I'm recording again, this went great. <laughs> Changing this option from clip to frame is what allows these keyframes to like pull that mask data, I believe. So especially things for like when I uh, like slimmed it down or opened it up or like changed its position. Uh, I believe this needs to be on frame. I haven't done a ton of stuff in the color page, um, but in my quick messing around, that was that was essential here. And hey, you, you've got a sort of pixelated face. I could turn off this overlay and this drop down if I wanted it. And then see, hey, we have this pixelated face through this entire clip, 
clip. That track was really quick, and then any quick adjustments I handled manually with just a few keyframes. Pretty nice. Let's do it on this next one uh, with something just like a Gaussian blur. For this time, I will put it on this first node. Uh, I will really pull up that strength, and again, I can mask that, come down. Maybe we'll run into some issues on these, or, you know, just my luck. Uh, it'll be great the entire time. Uh, on this tracker, same thing, setting this to frame. If I track forward and backwards, let's see what we have. Oh, this is going pretty good again. Uh, slips a little bit going back this way, so we'll see where that starts to happen. Again, on that same turn, if I set a keyframe and then come back around, reposition that, make sure over that move, we're pretty good. It'll be a quick jump, but for something like this, um, that isn't the most essential. We can have some blurry masks if we're just trying to accomplish the goal. And yeah, this is going pretty good. Keyframe just for this turn as well. Make sure we're on that face. And uh, again, at the end, let me track that. And we've got another uh, different style. Good to go. This time just straight blurred out. You can always change this intensity after the fact. Um, if you blur it too much, then it will just like become, you kind of want to find this like middle ground here. And for something like blur, then, you know, really, uh, you might want to scale some of this up. That might be one thing on this tracker. With this frame, any adjustments you want to make to that mask will have to be made on each keyframe. So if you want to change the overall shape, uh, that might be a little tougher. I believe on clip, if you don't need to adjust the position of this track, then you can change the mask shape afterwards and it will stay uh, like that new size throughout your entire clip. Uh, but last clip, what if you, uh, you know, don't want to mess with the blurs? I know different blurs are different effective to different, different degrees. But if I just search for color generator, drop that on, then wow, our entire screen is white, or we can make this any other color we want, or just black. And just like we did before, we can mask that. And if we just want to completely black out anything, we can do that. We'll see how this tracks here and track forward and backwards. And hey, especially because I like scaled up that mask a good bit here, this track looks pretty great. Uh, it sh probably shifts a little bit, but wow, like really quick. I didn't even need to adjust this one at all. Um, three different styles for how we would want to uh, censor someone's face really quick. Now this is valuable and I think important and super useful, but now let's get to the really exciting stuff. Obviously I'm doing this on a computer. So let's talk about logistics, about getting something to a computer. Now the workflow I'm gonna walk through can also be done on an iPad. So if you are purely like a one man band, you could kind of do this where you like record on your phone and then that syncs to a Blackmagic Cloud project, which I'm gonna talk about, which you could then access on an iPad and sort of like do this sort of, not quite in real time, obviously, but do this with like that quicker turnaround if it's all up to you. Everything I've showed off here should work pretty great on the color page on Resolve on the iPad as well. But the coolest stuff um, would come where you just have have a friend sort of like offsite with Resolve open, like I kind of showed before. I am in a special kind of project called a cloud project. Now this requires sort of like a separate cloud library purchase that's on like a monthly rental basis, but that is completely separate from all the other conversations about uh, the paid version of Resolve, Resolve Studio. This collaborative feature and pulling in clips live can still be done in the free version of Resolve. I have a few more icons down in this corner, especially this one for the Blackmagic Cloud Sync, which is super valuable. And this option here to enable or disable camera capture. When you create a cloud project, you have this option to allow remote cameras to see this project and load media directly into the media pool. And then that gets to your camera app. We have the Blackmagic camera app available on both Apple and Android of uh, really only a few. I mean, it's an increasing collection, uh, but just a few Android uh, specific devices because, you know, they all have different camera hardware and that's a whole thing. But I'm also screen recording on my phone right now. And you can see at the top, it's linked to this cloud project. If you click over to if you click over to media, you can like select an individual cloud project linked to your Blackmagic account. I will link in the description to like a slightly more flushed out video about this Blackmagic cloud process. We're going to walk through like how it works, uh, like in, in actual like function and work now. But you can see I'm connected to that YT338, which is the project I am currently in. And the important setting here as well is that in the media section, I have live sync enabled. 
and I am uploading originals and proxies. By default, live sync is off, and I believe upload might only be proxies. You'll have to mess with that, which means if this live sync is off, uh, you can record a video inside this camera app. And as soon as you are done recording, then it will sync that video so you can access it in DaVinci Resolve. If you have that live setting on, then I can start recording here and uh, we will have this camera uploads folder. And hey, uh, oh, this might not be that one. Oh, I turned, I turned live sync on. Hey, yeah. And then as I am recording here on my phone, that is already available in Resolve. I can drop that to my timeline, start to scrub through that. Um, and this will actually grow over time. Oh, I should pay attention. This will grow over time as new data comes in. So someone could be, you know, editing, pulling out smaller clips. Um, Resolve has really cool functionality to upload directly to like different social media sites. So like the turnaround here could be incredible. And then even inside this app, even if I stop recording and I have this little chat feature linked to this project. So if I just type in here, hey, 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 send that on my phone. Then inside my Resolve project in this little chat down here, I have that, hey, 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 by the camera crew. I didn't know it did that. That's super cool. Um, I didn't get a notification for that, but maybe if you keep this open or on another screen or something, you can see any, uh, like you can text right in your camera app, have it pop up on whatever desktop. Super cool, tons of potential here. Obviously, if you want to go through those initial steps to uh, like censor footage or protect identity, this is a super valuable use case, but even without that, just instantly having your clips arrive to your editor to, you know, work on or share more broadly. So that's not something you need to worry about if you're out in the field or, you know, you're busy protesting versus like straight documenting what's going on. Super cool. And this functionality even goes to some of Blackmagic's like more professional cinema cameras if you want like the most quality. Although, you know, depending on the situation where you are, uh, you know, having your phone might be a little, I don't know, safer or like a little less at risk. Everyone has a phone versus like a big bulky more expensive camera. You get what I'm saying. This is a really cool feature of DaVinci Resolve and Blackmagic Cloud projects that honestly, I know tons of people have no idea about, and I'm sure even less are taking advantage of. And I think sort of uh, this situation of protests with all this news coming out all the time, this is, this is a situation where these tools could add a lot of value. Blackmagic has even been doing some crazy stuff, um, like pulling this functionality into different like live streaming capability. That's pretty new. That's something I want to talk about eventually. Mostly on this channel, I talk a lot more about like the video production side of stuff versus live. I've talked about that video editing side of things for over five years now on this channel. And a chunk of that, I've even spent building plugins and presets for Resolve. You can find out more all about that, obviously here on the channel and over at shillingsupply.co. Some paid presets, but also dozens of free plugins and presets and templates. Uh, if you want to do more in Resolve, don't miss that. If you have any specific questions about like setting up this workflow, it is pretty straightforward. Once you do it, you need a free uh, Blackmagic Cloud account, which you can get on their website. Uh, the app, the camera app is free. Resolve is free um, on the Blackmagic website is where you would sign up for um, one of these like cloud libraries that is really then easy to like sync in. Oh, I believe you can have even 20 different people synced logged into one cloud library, or even like I'm using the same login here, so I'm not sure how that would work, but you could have tons of people out with their cameras all coming to one project, or you could have multiple different computers in one project at the time handling this. Like the, the workflow is just cool. So I think, I think we should do stuff with it. <laughs> If you have any questions, drop those below, or maybe I'll make a follow-up video walking through some of the more boring how to get stuff set up. Um, but I think even just letting people know this is an option, it's valuable. So that's more what this video is. We had the tutorial at the front, and then we had a like, hey, this is a cool thing you should also look into. Uh, so I, I wanted to make this video to spread the word. Um, and hopefully, you know, it, it's hard to do some good with video editing tutorials, but I think some people could, could do good with this. I think that's pretty cool. Hopefully you do too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.